Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new episode of Recovery. This one is a commercial real estate edition. Uh, my name is Alain Kapatashungu, and I'm the co-founder of Front Door. Uh, in this episode, I'm really delighted to chat with someone that I had the pleasure to meet, I think, two years ago in Chicago. Um, he's one of the most respected leaders in the commercial real estate industry. So this is Owen Ecker. Owen Ecker and, uh, and Company in Chicago, although this morning, joining us from Sony, California. So first of all, Owen, how are you doing today? We're doing great. Uh, you know, it's... It's nice to be in sunny California when Chicago's having snowstorms. So we're glad to be here, uh, but working from here. I bet, I bet. That's awesome. So, so for those of you guys who don't know, uh, just a quick intro here. So at least one Econ company, which is a commercial tenant representation and brokerage firm that represents interests of tenants and clients throughout, throughout the U.S. Obviously, you founded the company. Um, our experience spans almost five decades, which is just incredible. Howard has a straightforward attitude, which I love because as it relates to conducting his business, he said something like, he marches on the beat of a different drum, as he put it, and I like it. So that's <laughs> he's going he's gonna to talk to us a little bit more about it, but I'm going to look back about the aspect of the world of business. privately held company, which allowed him to really just focus on really serving his clients um, the, the, the best way that he can, and we're going to touch on it a little bit later on. So, um, to get us started, Howard, the question that I would like to ask you first is, even though there's no such thing in real estate as typical, uh, what has been your quote-unquote typical work day throughout this, this pandemic, pretty much? Well, to be honest, uh, I start every work day discussing with my wife what we're going to have. Uh, so uh, my typical work day starts uh, just trying to decide what we're going to have for dinner. Uh, but then I actually go uh, and uh, start uh, communicating with both tenants and owners that I, uh, tenants that I represent and owners that I'm trying to educate um, as to what really is happening uh, let's say what what is real versus what uh, owners wish and tenants wish because they both wish different things uh, owners wish that their space would be full and rent would go up yeah. and tenants wish they didn't have the space they had and it was they wish it was cheaper if is they're in it so um, exactly. my days are spent uh, uh, I could say being a psychiatrist to uh, both tenants and landlords. That's what I had in mind, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you know the the benefit I have, Alan, is that I've been doing this over fifty years, so I have the benefit of experience and history. Uh, you know, I always think, uh, particularly in the military, great military leaders study wars go of what's going by um, while the, the guys fighting in the field don't have the time. <laughs> um, so uh, part of, uh, I think, what's happening here is that um, we have to look at what's going forward based on what's happened before. And for the most part, people don't have that historical perspective. I love it. That's powerful. And 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 then you know that more often than other history pretty much repeats itself. Yeah. That's why I love what you just said. Just like you can look back when you can look what happened before and then try to and not not really anticipate but also just pretty much figure out what what's what's gonna be what what's what what can happen next. Um, Correct. Thanks. Um Correct. So the thing that I would like to follow up on is, so you are the, this, the presidency of Owenicon Company, and as it pertains to your tenants that you just talked about, that you represent, like, what did you advise them uh, to do as soon as you realized that, you know, offices pretty much closed due to this pandemic? Because those guys still have rent to pay. So what did you, what did you tell them? How did you, how did you approach well, them? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult because... My uh, my advice 
to be honest, immediately to all my tenants was stop paying rent. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. If, if the government is telling you you can't go to work, yeah. why would you pay rent? Sure. Um, uh, very few of them, by the way, took that advice. Yeah. Landlords are intimidating. Uh, whether they should be or not is another question. Uh, uh, but they are intimidating to tenants, even big tenants, and they're afraid of their landlord. So uh, unfortunately, most of them didn't take that advice. Um, some did, however. Okay. And, um, you know, here it is almost a year later, and the ones who did haven't suffered any repercussions as yet, and the ones who didn't are still paying rent and not occupying space. That's incredible. That was, yeah, that's exactly what I had in mind. Like, I was wondering, because obviously the rent is due, so you, you, cannot, you cannot go without paying rent. And, uh, I, didn't, I didn't see it that way. But uh, you definitely, definitely make sense. That's, that's, you that's, know, and that's I think, you know, we've always, even in residential, have this perspe uh, perspective that the, the landlords are these evil, you know, uh, people. Uh, not all of them are, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, um, in residential, I think they've been more responsive actually than an office. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in some cases really in office, uh, you don't even know who the landlord is. Mm -hmm. Um, if the building's been financed through a public loan, okay. a CMBS loan, there's no landlord to go to. Oh. That's, that complicates everything pretty much. It really does. Um, and I think on the other end of this, uh, we're going to see lots of things. But one of the things is uh, landlords and tenants are going to get on a much different footing. Agreed. Agreed. You know, they're going to have to figure out how to work together because, as I said, historically, landlords want long leases and high rent and tenants want up to now, long leases and low rent. Now, 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 forget long leases. Nobody wants a long lease. It's all about short term. It's all about hedging risk. Yes. You know, as a sidelight, there was a, a great book written about two years ago by a woman, Alison Schrager. A woman, uh, an economist walks into a brothel is the name of the, uh, the book. And, um, she, she talks about managing risk. For years, I've talked about managing risk from tenants, and nobody's paid attention. Now they're starting to pay attention. Exactly. Uh, they don't, there's no other choice, so they have to pay attention. Correct. Now they have to. That is powerful. Um, what, is, what is to you the, the one thing that you believe was overlooked in the commercial real estate industry specifically? That just this validated as an undeniable demand, like something that everybody was like, ah, this don't pay attention to it. But now here to stay. What is that one thing? Well, I, actually, I think there's. I, I'm going to change that and say there's two things. Okay. First, to, uh, the office market has always been traditional. Yes. I mean, uh, even when it's gone up and down. You know, tenants had to have office space. Oh. And so uh, whether the market was soft and they made better deals or was tight, they made worse deals, they always had space. Yes. That's over with. Wow. There, there, there are tenants today, I, I communicated with one of my law firm clients this morning, mm -hmm. who said they're doing so well without office that they may never and most likely will never go back to an office. That's it. That's unbelievable. How so think about that. And, there, and some of these are very big tenants. You know, it's, so it's, um, you know, there's two things, and, and those are the, the two. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, traditionally we, are, we got up every morning and we went to work. Exactly. Okay, well... You and I are both going to work today. Are we in our office? Absolutely not. We're actually in the comfort of our own home. 
That's right. But if you look at, uh, I'm not familiar particularly with uh, Paris where you are, but, you know, I think in Chicago, the occupancy rate is about 16%. That is absolutely. It's pretty much the same here. Like, yeah. So uh, think about, uh, you know, commerce is still going on. The economy is moving forward. And, um, you know, and people aren't at work. Exactly. In the traditional sense. What is really incredible is that nobody could, obviously we couldn't anticipate this, but the behavior that the pandemic has created, because in everybody's mind and in my mind, going to work was to go to the office. And now you have, like you said, large companies and big companies, even here in France, who just talking to their employees and saying, you know what, for the, pretty much for 2021, up until maybe November, October, November, you should just stay home and work from home. And I could right. never imagine like large, really large companies with 5,000 employees working from their home. And uh, Well, but that's tradition. That's my point about it. Yes, you know, traditionally, what did we do? We all got up and went to work. Exactly. That tradition, uh, which has gone on for, a, you know, I was think, writing a little something this morning about it. You know, I don't remember when that wasn't the case. That's and right. now it's not the case. Exactly. Yet the, the world economy is functioning. Everything is, uh, yeah, exactly. Everything, everything, is just, everything is just pretty much going on. Yeah. It's unusual, if you can say it, in that, in that, in that regard at least. By the way, Landlords hate the fact that the economy is functioning. <laughs> yeah, because, because of all of the office spaces that they have empty. Correct. Even now, now they're getting red on it, wow. you know, by, from most people. But, you know, the writing is on the wall uh, when it comes to why pay rent if I'm not occupying space. Exactly. That's incredible. Um, since since you have what I believe to be a really interesting eagle eye view of what's happening in the industry, uh, what can you tell us about the state of the business, transaction wise or trends wise? Like, what are you seeing? What are you hearing in terms of trends? In terms of trends. Okay, um, and it's it's actually quite interesting. Um, you know, from the tenant side, nobody has a clue. <laughs> because nobody knows, you know, the big public corporations are worried about bringing people back for lawsuits. Exactly. If, you know, you go back to work, you get sick, you go home and your grandmother dies, uh, yes. are you going to get sued? Exactly. So the, the, you know, the big tenants, that's, they're the ones saying, well, maybe we'll look at 2022. Yes. Okay. It's going back. So the, but when we go back, even if we have long leases or we make new leases, we're going to have, uh, for want of better, a pandemic clause that says if something like this comes again and we're, we're not allowed to go to work, we won't pay rent. Wow. Okay. So I see that. Landlords are... Um, you know, uh, there are two kinds of landlords. Uh, first of all, let me back up. Uh, I always, def people ask me, how do I define an A building? Yes. And uh, most people think an A building is the newest skyscraper or ground scraper, whatever you want to call it, the newest. Okay. I say an A building is a building that's owned by an A owner. Oh. Because you can look at some of the great buildings around the world, um, I'm more familiar particularly in the United States, but the buildings that are owned by great owners that own them for a long period of time are uh, much better positioned than uh, the buildings that are owned for funds by funds for three to five years that want to flip them at a big profit Agreed. Agreed. okay so um you know uh in this environment 
A owners have actually been uh, somewhat uh, susceptible to assisting tenants. Got it. Got it. The big public owners have basically said, you signed a lease, you owe the rent, I don't care whether you're in the space or not, pay it. That's so because we have to pay dividends to our shareholders. No. Okay. Well, you know, it's uh, that dance is, is over with. <laughs> okay. It, it, the it, you know it's the repercussions haven't been felt yet, but long term that dance is over with. Exactly. You're going to either work with your tenants in good and bad times. Yes. Okay, lost the uh, lost you. I think you lost me. Yeah, it says just one sec. Yeah. Um, just go video. Are you there? Yeah, there you are. Sorry, something happened. Um, a landlords are going to work with tenants, but uh, they're for the most part long term owners. Now, I'm only talking about office space, I'm not talking about retail and residential. So that's that, that would, that's, that's, everything is granular. That's what I love about commercial. You have to really be, you have to really read it between the lines. Uh, that's that's awesome. Um, you do. You know, we have we see today uh, office tenants looking for space. Well, they aren't looking for space on the top floor of a high rise building anymore. In fact, uh, uh, several of my clients are saying, find me a restaurant or a retail space that's broke and we're going to move in there because we have our own bathrooms. Exactly. We don't have to get in an elevator. Yes. And uh and our people can come and go and there's parking. That makes sense. I mean, I mean, think about, I always think about Sears Tower in Chicago, or Willis Tower now, that's, you know, 100 stories high. They can't even figure out how to get the people in the building. Forget <laughs> their office. Exactly. <laughs> how do you get thousands of people into a building safely? Exactly. With the protocols and, and safely, that's the, that's the key word. Safely. The key word is safely. How do you do that? You know, if you're in a hundred story building and you're on the top floor, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's, <laughs> there's four and a half million feet at uh, Willis Tower. You know, how do, how do four and a half million feet of people, almost 17,000 a day, God. go to their office? They can't. Almost a small city, pretty much. Yeah, they, they can't. They can't. You know, it's different. I saw a great cartoon yesterday of uh, people go at an airport, and they were all standing six feet apart, waiting to get, you know, their ticket validated. And meanwhile, they're on the plane, jammed in, you know, exactly. sitting next to each other, wearing masks. Now, how ridiculous is that? You won't let them near each other at the airport, but you put them on a plane, and they're jammed in together. That's exactly the point that I, that I tried to make this morning. I think I was talking to somebody from my family. I was like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, no. you're 37,000 feet. You are 200 people out there. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Get how do you get it? I, I, people won't, it can't even figure out how to get into the building. Yeah. <laughs> Forget going back to work. It's definitely not for now. This is we're looking at 2022, and uh, it makes more sense. There's so many touch points, as you say, safely. You don't even know like where to look. How would you how would you put something that back together? It's, it's, that's that's my point. So there's still tremendous amount of unknown. Yes. In the commercial market. Absolutely. Wow. You know, and you know, and I, I've got to say this: people are talking about how they renovate buildings um, uh, to be more friendly. Yes. And so the, they've talked about putting elevator buttons at a foot level. So you take your foot and kick the button up or down so you don't touch it. Okay. Well, I but mean. The exercise is, is a little bit complicated there. Like, <laughs> What's that going to solve? <laughs> you know? Exactly. The, the, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say the least. A lot of what we're seeing doesn't. But, <laughs> um, so, it's also, um, 
what, what advice that that's actually what advice would you give or to companies looking for office space right now would you tell a company because you, you advise so many of them would you tell would you tell a company today to just rent an office or to wait and just stay at home and work from there what what would you tell well, the company uh, you know i think today my advice is uh, wait and see because yeah. nobody knows okay. um at, at first and um um uh, secondly you have to look inward Uh, at your company because the one thing word I haven't mentioned yet and you haven't is technology yes you and I are talking uh, as if we're sitting next to each other you're in Paris I'm in uh, California Absolutely. and and we're being very effective yes. so the, the real question because you know you can go back to the office but the real question in my mind is how has technology affected and how will it affect it's been perfected so much better in the last 11 months even what we're doing right now absolutely so uh and there's going to be lots of other things i mean i ran into a young woman a couple of weeks ago who works for salesforce mm -hmm. and she put all her uh personal goods and storage because she was going to be in California for a, a few weeks. Then she was going to work from Vail so she could ski. And she has no idea where she's going to work from going forward. But her company says, as long as you're doing your job, what do I care where you are? Exactly. It's okay. As long as you do what you're supposed to do, everything, I mean, it's fine. But see, that's, that, that, says to me that there's you know, i go back to tradition yes. traditionally the big users of space have been the law firms the accounting firms and the financial industry Agreed. okay who are the big users today google mm -hmm. salesforce apple yes. and and they're so much more technology savvy You know, there are law firms that still have law libraries. <laughs> Now, how ridiculous is that? You know, they have hundreds of feet or thousands of feet with a law library. That's all, all the books are decoration because nobody ever looks at them. Really, <laughs> that is definitely tradition. I think, it, it, yeah. And that's why the word I want to keep going back to is tradition. I agree. So traditionally, the big users... Yes. were in industries that today they aren't the the big users absolutely wow so uh those are that's uh, the the big users today are so technology savvy yes uh, and they're the ones saying to their workers well you can come to the office but you can work from anywhere we don't care exactly you can actually stay for you can just stay at home probably whatever you want to go so And home can be where you want. You want to be in Paris, fine. Exactly. You want to be in California, fine. I, I, you know, <laughs> the other thing that's very important is that production or, or uh, will not be measured by how many hours you spend in the office. True. It'll be measured by what you actually produce. Absolutely. Again, tradition. How, That's right. Tradition is you went and you spent, if you were a smart young employee, you didn't spend eight hours in the office. You spent 12 hours in the office or 10 hours. I used to say when I was uh, young that I never let the boss be in the office before me or I never left until he left when I was working for other people. Wow. Okay? That's and cool. I mean, that's the way it was. And that's how... People judged my working hard <laughs> today, you know, because I was there so much. Yes. That's not, a, in reality, that's not a judge that's, uh, of, how, uh, of your production. Exactly. It doesn't you know. mean you're producing. You are there, man. That's right. Who are you producing? How many people are in offices and not have never produced? <laughs> You have a lot of those to say. <laughs> That's true. And, you know, that leads to the next thing, and that is the availability of high-quality personnel is much greater today than it's ever been. Oh, wow. 
okay? Because companies have laid off really good people because of the pandemic. There's great people out there looking for jobs. And do you need a couple of average people or you're better off paying for one really good person? Exactly. That's cool. And that's something we're seeing changing because of this pandemic. Yeah, even on the, on, on, the, on the hiring aspect too, I agree. I've seen that. I've seen that. That's powerful. Um, this, it is powerful. This is a more, let's say, personal question towards you. Uh, what are some of the lessons that you've learned during this pandemic? That you is there anything that you have to learn about you know, yourself or something oh, new? Yeah. So well, I, I, the the hardest thing for me because, uh, in I uh, what I did was work. I identified my myself with my work. With your work, yeah, makes sense. That's where I got my identity. Yeah, uh, I now have realized that there's more to my identity. Than work. And how many hours I work. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, I, and at the same time, I understand because I mean, you've been doing this for, you've built this entire company from the ground up. So you can only just identify yourself to your company. And now I think it just allows you to kind of have a, some kind of a step back and look at, you know, different avenues. And now you're in California, you are, and, and you're enjoying it. Taking a little bit more time, That's right? And like, okay, and I'm, I, I'm doing my work, but I'm also playing golf most every day, <laughs> <laughs> you know? or you know, spending time with my wife and my dog. Exactly. My kids aren't here, so one of the things people are finding is, uh, you know, maybe I, maybe they can't start their work till after their kids go to bed, yes. but. There, the the family is coming out of this more solid. Agreed, agreed. Every you, you I mean, it's been pretty much like uh, an entire year now, and I have I've never seen my family that that much. So. <laughs> okay, well, you're the living proof of it. Exactly, exactly. So that's uh, it, it's just just better, as you say. We 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 come out stronger from this. So that's 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 always a good thing. And I think you, you asked a question that has touched me, and that is, what have I gotten out of it? Yes. And I've gotten out of it who I am. That is powerful. That is powerful. I love it. I really love it. So, and I, I don't think I'm in the minority. Oh, no. I think, I think if people step back and say, what's, what's happened here? Yeah. That's what they're going to find. Agreed. They've had to identify who they are exactly. and what their own values are. Absolutely. Identify by who you are, not by what you are doing, which is a completely different thing. Completely different thing. Correct. That is awesome. Uh, I, I thought about the last question that I wanted to ask you. Um, what is the biggest problem you are currently facing in your business? In other words, if you could snap your finger and immediately solve one issue, what would it be? Well, I, uh, the issue, and it's, it's not an easy question to answer. Yes. It, when it comes to business, the issue would be uh, that people accepted the reality yes. of what's happening. It, you know, I, I was working on a renewal in the landlord increased the rent by 30%. And um, I said to him, what is this about? He said, well, that was our budget. Yeah, but... I said, I said, have you looked out the window? He said, what's out the window? Oh, my God. He's completely disconnected. But that's part of the problem. So, you know, people have to get connected to reality. Absolutely. That's and your budget is not reality. Your budget is what in your mind you want it to be. <laughs> exactly. That is crazy. So, that is crazy. Yeah. That is so, crazy. Um, 
Thank you very much, Oren. Uh, that's a wrap for this week's episode. Special episode with Oren Ecker. You can catch this episode on YouTube and on all platforms streaming podcasts. Remember, in the recovery, don't just get back to the same but strive to get to a better place. Oren, well, that was my pleasure to have you today. Uh, Thank you. It's great to see you and talk to you again. It was definitely a pleasure and I can't wait to be able to travel again and Maybe grab uh, dinner or lunch whenever I get to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you soon. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. Have, have a good day.